Aloha and welcome to A Word with Ward. I'm Representative Gene Ward and WWW has an opportunity to speak with community leaders about issues of community interest. Today we have the honor of having Alan Tateishi and Kaleo Pike to talk about the Hawaii Kai livable hui, livable Hawaii Kai hui, all the things that they're doing and the things that are happening in our community in Hawaii Kai. So welcome to you two. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much you. for having us. So the people who are viewing us, and you don't have to be from Hawaii Kai to Kalama Valley, the district I represent, but from anywhere to know what livable Hawaii Kai Hui is doing, because I'm sure there are versions of that in your district doing similar things and maybe understanding things in a similar way. But before we get into the, the organization, how about some of the background of you two? Who'd like to kick off? The, the bright lady in red here. Right. She Kaleo, All right. what's your background? Well, my background is basically, as far as career-wise, was mostly in um, finance and management. And the, I was, but I've always been very passionate about Hawaiian sites, Hawaiian mm -hmm. history. And so that's what brought me over to the Hui. So that's how I came into contact, and I became part of their Cultural Resource Committee. That's how a lot of people get involved in politics. They see an issue or they see something wrong. I gotta yes. get, We used to, at the East West Center, complain all night about the problems in the world, but wake up too tired the next morning to do anything. So finally, it was later on that I ran for office, so I, I can see the passion <laughs> in you. Yes. Ellen, yourself, you used to be a professor, or you still a professor? Yeah, I was an associate professor at uh, 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 Honolulu Community College, and uh, I'm a political science grad. Aha, uh -huh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, um, right in the state capitol that fits uh, very well with well, where we are now in the I Lello studio. I didn't see myself fitting in this scenario. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like, like she was saying, you know, I have a passion for, you know, uh, especially for, like in an area of East Honolulu, my grandpa was displaced. From Kalama Valley as a oh. uh, pig farmer. My father was displaced. Your grandfather was a pig farmer? Yeah. Like George Santos, right. the first protest that <sighs> led to the Hawaiian Renaissance? Right. That's it. You're, you're, you're a historical figure then. <laughs> oh, I, w I wouldn't want to say I know that. But you know, because like the people generally don't associate Hawaii Kai with Hawaiian or Hawaiian this or Hawaiian, uh, particularly the Hawaiian Renaissance. But if it was George Santos and his group that came out and surrounded everybody in his farm that said to Kamehameha Schools, you know, we, we've got a bigger cause that we're responsible to. And your grandfather must have been part and parcel of that. How far from his farm was the George Santos farm? About, say, maybe about an eighth of a mile inland into the in, valley. Well, in the Moka side. Yeah, and my grandfather also had a uh, partnership in Kahala. Right Ooh. smack dab where Jen Shiro's people are. And oh. He had a piggery there. That's another show and a different subject. Oh, okay. I'm just kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> political scientists can't help it. You know, they, <laughs> that's, that's a interesting uh, name in Kahala. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, getting back to my family, my dad had a chicken farm, and it was located next to where um, the power plant is on Kalani Oli Highway by... Kalani High School, mm -hmm. and we were down about a quarter of a mile going towards Wailiiki Park. We had um, commercial chicken farm, not just commercial. Commercial. Commercial chicken farm. We had about fifteen thousand chicken at that time. Wow. We got at the time at the time we got displaced by Bishop of State. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know how many chicken farms are left in the state of Hawaii now, Alan? This is a bit of a side. Uh, did you know? But we have one of the few left in our caucus by uh, Representative Cheap. Her family has a chicken farm, mm -hmm. egg, egg poultry farm basically, and she said there's only four in yeah. the state of Hawaii left. That's correct. And that is, mm -hmm. that's almost, uh, well, They're all old sad. timers too, yeah. you know, like Rocky mm -hmm. Road, yeah. Kaneshiro Farms, mm -hmm. they're all, they're all, one from, Ka uh, not Kalama, they were in Waile uh, in the Wailaiki area too. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of these farmers have been, and they've ended up in Momenal because I guess, you know. Were well, the land still open and yeah. okay. available? I know the finance committee the other day had a hearing and it was mentioned that the average age of today's farmer is 60 years old. Yes. So that is where, if there's not replacement, farming as we know it, or agriculture as we know it, and we have a constitutional obligation to preserve ag, to promote ag, mm -hmm. and we're actually importing now, what, 85, 90%? Correct. 
So it's good to see a political uh, scientist with good <laughs> farming <laughs> ag roots, Alan. Anyways, welcome to both of you again. Thank you for this opportunity. And yeah. How did you guys get involved then with Livable Hawaii Kai Hui? How did it happen, Claire? You said well, there was something that drew you. Well, actually, I was working for the State Historic Preservation at the time. Mm. And in 2007, we had gotten a call that there, some sites might be in danger. So uh, myself and three other archaeologists went out to the site. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got nicknamed HPS and not GPS <laughs> because Hawaiian positioning system because oh, okay. it was well <laughs> overgrown, couldn't see Good anything, label. but I found the platform. Mm. So, and you know, uh, we've, I've kept my eye on that particular project. And in 2009, I happened to be at the office and received the community call that bulldozing had happened mm -hmm. and that the bulldozer mm -hmm. had gone onto the platform itself. So that's when I started the ball rolling. And We're talking about the Waikai Project now, exactly. which is right at the corner of exactly. Waikai Drive and Yes. So that's, what's, Holy. that's Holy. what started my uh, journey mm -hmm. with the livable Hawaii Kai Hui. I met with members of the Hui and we walked and um, we actually did our drumming in November of that year mm -hmm. as part of our what culture. What is drumming? We did a drumming to bring awareness of the oh, plight okay. of this site. Oh, okay. And it was a spiritual journey for um, members and it um, ended up being the impetus for things to start rolling for the project mm. itself. So we truly believe that um, with the grassroots effort of the Hui, and bringing in some cultural advisors and speaking to the issues at hand really elevated the awareness in the community that this mm -hmm. is just not a vacant site, but it's a site with remnants of a heiau, um, Kiawaba wetlands, the last remnant of that, huge Kuapa pond. It mm -hmm. was just a embracing of this whole area and that started the movement. So that's Did how I first got involved. Th that is an exciting first beginning. Did you ever imagine that that would be cut off as part of that otherwise luxury condominium that would be next door at Havea there? Well, Did you let even me imagine that? Well, when I first got involved, everyone told us it would never happen. We would never be able to acquire the five acres. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, with the community effort, with the... Um, the really, uh, the, the hui, I'm just going to call them the hui because little bull oh, yeah. kai hui is a, a little long. It's a mouthful. You're yes, right. But the hui. they, in their stalwart efforts, and I credit the board for their um, just unwavering effort to talk with the developers and to have a conversation and not to be adversarial. Mm. That was the key mm. to bring things to the table. Contrary to the George Santos approach. <laughs> right, Ellen? True. There are different True. approaches, different you know. Different times, different ways. However, True. it was instrumental in getting people to the table and to talk. Hmm. Not to talk at each other, but talk with each other. And the result of that was for them to see from a cultural standpoint that by revitalizing this area, it appreciated their property far more than hmm. their Go, uh, their tennis courts and swimming pools and parking lot would ever have done for their property. That's certainly something that probably surprises uh, developers when they think, you know, if we cut off five acres, we're going to lose versus cut off five acres and they can actually gain. We're going to yes. come back to the status of that uh, building mm -hmm. project, which is on uh, hold, I believe, temporarily. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Alan, how did you get involved with the Hui? I'm one of the original board members. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, she was talking. You were, she was talking about you then. One of the persistent, <laughs> negotiated, <laughs> and, uh, the exactly. uh, we, we confrontational. Right. Mm -hmm. We want to keep that image about ourselves. We're not mm -hmm. not confrontational. Although there were times that I wouldn't say it was heated, especially with the farm controversy. You know about yeah. the lease things, yeah. and that, that that was one of the things that really made me want to get on board because you know. Both my grandfather and my father got displaced, you mm -hmm. know, and mm -hmm. um, I was, you know, inside of me, inside, I felt that, you know, that uh, mode of controversy came up, like, oh, that George Santos mode. But, you know, we, as a Hui, have never been really controversial. We've worked hand in hand with Bishop Estate to negotiate the lease, a sensible lease, mm -hmm. you know, 
and the terms of the length of that the farmers and like you were saying too, where have all the farmers gone? We're not it, we're not only talking about the poultry farmers, but you know, with looking at all the other lands that are planned for like Kopili, Ko Ridge, mm. and all these mm -hmm. areas like that. Farmland, so clearly. Yes. Farmland yes. at Hopili. And Galbraith so that, uh, Estate. Yeah. Yes. And that kinda impassioned me to, you know, get on board. I mean, early on, you know, as soon as with mm -hmm. this concept mm -hmm. of this hui came about, you know, and we've gotten um, it's not only the hui, it's a ton of people that volunteers, mm -hmm. that volunteer and help, mm -hmm. you know, ideas, you know, and, and their contribution have made our, quote, job easier, mm -hmm. you know, and it is, it is, um, <coughs> to me, East Honolulu is kind of unique, very unique in a way that, um, you know, we, we take care of our ohana, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just we don't want people stepping all over us, and having, uh, you know, when when we have issues about commercial properties, especially when you're talking about food land and stuff like that, you know, we okay. see where that goes. I yeah. can really identify with that as the representative of the area. We are always held accountable, and I and I like that mm -hmm. because the community expects, demands, and otherwise wants answers and wants mm -hmm. people to be there, accessible mm -hmm. and available and you know, why and how and all those other things, call us on the carpet. And, and, and I appreciate both of you and the role that you've played to do that. What I want to remind um, everyone, if they don't realize, even though Alan has mentioned the successful renegotiation of our farmer's lease, <coughs> in 15 years, that actually reverts back to Kamehameha Schools Bishop Estate which so far they have not wanted to talk what happens after the, mm -hmm. the 50 years. Ex well, the 15 year extension, which is on top of a 35 years, which then in 15 years, about 20, mm -hmm. uh, 25, right. I would hope that you guys would keep the fervor and the fire in your belly to make sure that that doesn't become a subdivision, because that was the fear when mm -hmm. renegotiations took place. And I know I worked with a number of the farmers, particularly to get the renegotiation expertise from the coffee farmers on the uh, the big island that that was very helpful unfortunately the man who helped with that economic study has passed away but i think we have to stay forever just like kaivi coast mm -hmm. you know cabins yes. and kaivi right. we got to stay very very alert yeah and with the farmers in you know you know the way the time flies in 15 years it's going to be absolutely tomorrow right around unless on. we forget right. it so we have to pass right. the baton yeah and i know i'd also like to interject that the hui, you know, although it's livable Hawaii hui, mm. really embraces all of Mauna Lua Bay. So it, Which it is from where to all where? All the way from, I would say, from Kalaniiki all the way to Kalama. So mm -hmm. mm. it's encompassing all of that. So it's not just strictly for yeah, the, it's not just in uh, front for of the quote, Hawaii Kai yeah. um, area. They are um, always looking out for their neighbors and communities and embracing all of their mm -hmm. struggles as well. So, you know, I just want to make sure that everyone knows that that is also part of the hui. Kaleo, speaking of uh, geographical specificity, uh, you were talking about the Havea. Uh, hey, yeah, what about somebody who's watching and saying, you know, what, what is she talking about? Where is this? I kind of alluded to Waikai Drive in Keoholi. Yes. You want to describe the, the, the plot and some of the things that otherwise people yes, may not be familiar um, with? In actuality, at this point in time, if we look at the scientific definition of where Havea Heiau is, four archaeological studies will put it in four separate areas. Mm. So no one can actually pinpoint and say this is exactly the area. However, we knew that Havea was a very large complex. So when we talk about a Heiau, it's not just a uh, triangulation of, of Pohaku. Mm -hmm. It is the complex itself, which mm -hmm. is encompassing mm -hmm. of all of that. So what we agree upon is maybe we don't know exactly where the actual um, boundaries. The yeah. boundaries are of the Pohaku. Mm -hmm. We know that the complex encompasses of what the five acres have right now. So somewhere within those five acres, definitely that well, is where. Well, we have part of that in there, and it could extend into other areas that have already been developed. We know that mm -hmm. Kaiser did break down the Heiau and use the stones to make his roadway and uh, boundaries mm -hmm. for his marinas. Did his, did his machinery break down? Or? 
Oh, I'm sure that they used much of the uh, material that was there. So, but mm. the, the thing that I want to make mention to the general public is you can take all the pohaku away from a sacred site. Mm. It does not lessen the site. A heiau is a vortex. So it extends to the heavens and mm. down into the earth. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying is that this is part of a sanctified area that we have been honored to help preserve. So there's five acres, and it's going to be preserved. And will the public be able to visit it or see it? Because I know they can see the clearing now. Exactly. What's planned for actually public appreciation? Well, as, there is a plan right now that um, it's in progress, we, which, which um, has to do with the Kealvava wetlands as well as for the historic sites. It has not been written in concrete yet as to what the community or, or plans are for that area. We definitely know the community will be involved in every aspects of it, and site visits will definitely be made available. But we need to also balance that with the fragileness of the area so that mm -hmm. we don't have mm -hmm. tons and tons of people walking on the platform. We don't have tons and tons of people walking on fragile areas. We may cordon them off so that they can see it, but not necessarily be on it. So there might be pathways, you know, walkways throughout this park area that will be very conducive for learning and understanding the area. And but also not saying it's off limits in, in its entirety, that there might be times and opportunities for that to Kaleo, happen. Kaleo, you remind me of a uh, question I always put to the founder of the Hui, Elizabeth Riley. You've done a beautiful clearing, but you've got those, what I called, ugly telephone poles sticking up in the front. And I said, Elizabeth, why do you want those telephone poles? She said, well, because, and you mentioned the walkway, because at some point when you do the walkway, yes. I gather that's going to be part of the structural assistance to build it or something. Exactly. So okay, so when it's done, it'll look better than it is now. Right oh, now, yeah, and then also we will um, plant mm. native plants. So we we're going to replace what was taken out with uh -huh. native plants that used to be part of the environment. And that's all been done by volunteer work. All by Correct? volunteer. All, all volunteer. All community volunteer. shows up. And to, yes. to further <coughs> you know, explain, not only because of the, the, the historicalness mm -hmm. of the area, it's like the uh, moorhen that you don't find mm -hmm. very, you know, it's, it's an endangered species. Um, we yeah, have, we have had it. several Pueo sightings. Yes. I mean, it's the kind of really chicken skin kind of stuff that you see this big wingspan coming out and just Mm -hmm. Settles into the area. The yeah. Hawaiian owl is a wingspan of how many feet? Oh, when, I don't know. When it's, the, it's it's huge. I mean, my hair st stood up one day when <laughs> it came across, yeah. <laughs> you know, Hawaii Drive, and I thought, oh my God, what's this? You know, it's like mm -hmm. uh, there's some mana so flying. It's big. It's yes. big. It's mm. big. And I think Elizabeth had, saw, had yeah. seen it too. Right. Mm -hmm. But you know, besides that, and well, the ducks that you see around mm -hmm. where the um, tennis courts are and stuff. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's something that's really conducive to the whole area, yeah, mm -hmm. that we have wildlife there. So we don't want, mm -hmm. you know, we're not, we don't want, our plan is not to have people trekking all over the place to scare maybe. And they won't be able to begin at the Oahu Club and pass through to the Havea, correct? It's gonna, correct. There will be a it, it will be it is, um, okay. s uh, specifically designated so that um, the boundaries will be kept because the Oahu mm -hmm. Club is a private entity, mm -hmm. so we want to make sure that we respect their boundaries as well. But you know, an another thing too to remember is all the work that the community is doing is to bring back energy and life back into this area, and it's like a beacon mm. for people to come from within the community, not necessarily a beacon, which can be also from the outside community, but this is pride within your community to serve that Look at this wonderful, beautiful place that we have, right in the middle of this urbanized Kalua Nui Ridge up there, Mariner's Ridge, and Haiwane, and you know, Mariner's Cove, and yet we have this oasis. And I think that is what the Hui's dream is to be for the community. And Kaleo, listening to you, you know that it's important to have people who can speak and inspire others to appreciate and see it. Sometimes people look at a painting and they don't really know what it is mm -hmm. until somebody explains and points right. out the intricacies, mm -hmm. the nuances, the subtleties, 
but particularly in the Hawaiian culture, rather than a blanket yes. uh, of something something that's highly. When you mentioned the vortex going to the heavens mm -hmm. and into the center, that, that's a conceptual uh, difference that I was not aware of. And it's not really, you know, the boundaries are not really set as how it'll be in the future because the wall there that's mm -hmm. the boundary for the uh, proposed condominium you mm -hmm. know, is mm -hmm. that that's going to be quote remediated so that it'll be I don't know it's a stone wall or something yeah like there's going to be a so stone wall clear separation. entrance yeah, so yeah. where that that wall mm -hmm. is it'll be nicely set up mm -hmm. you know, so Alan you mentioned a key word boundaries the East Oahu Sustainable Communities Plan right you mentioned uh, very quickly in passing, I want to go back to it, where we were talking about the strip mall at Monolo Bay. Could you briefly summarize, could a little reinforce what we did in our last week program about Kamehameha Schools and Bishop Estate and the food land possibly putting a strip mall in there? The involvement of the community vis-a-vis -vis the Hui in the East Honolulu Sustainable Plan, you want to give us an update on that? What's, what's afoot? Well, you know, it's like, First, getting back to what you, I know you've done a study. Well, I've got two polls out yeah, there. Yeah, and, and you know, to show what <laughs> Kamehameha School Bishop of State wants and what Fulan wants. Mm. You know. And that piece of the pie was very distorted to polar opposites. Kamehameha School Bishop and what you've. you've majority on like their poll says they're yeah. for it, majority That's on my poll says against it. Mm -hmm. Community concerns. So, you know, this is part of the sustainable. We want to make. Why sure do they want to change the sustainable community plan? Why do they want to do that? So people understand, well, why are you arguing about a plan? What, what if they get it in there, does that suggest or imply it, it succeeds? It'll just keep following, you know, and commercializing. And we don't, you know, we want to, you know, people that come to visit East Honolulu, says, you know, they, they're, they're driving through Kalani Ohio. Then all of a sudden, when you pass and you start to pass where the first condominium is and you get into Mount Bay, they mm -hmm. said, wow, it's like a different area of the island. You know, it kind of just opens up. But, you know, we want to keep things as is. I mean, we're not anti-growth, but, mm -hmm. you know, for sure. And we all. love food land also. We love food but land. But we love yeah. Hawaii yeah. Kai more. Right. Uh, that's oh, the yeah. I just heard. We yes. love food land. We, mm -hmm. we, we gave them, there was uh, Paige Alton here the other day with uh, Laura Buck saying, you know, we went out and gathered 3,000 signatures. Mm -hmm. People were so empathetic. We gave them a send-off at Kaiser, a town hall meeting, giving them commendations and saying, you must return of course, they want them in Kalama Valley rather than as a strip mall. But I think it's that love for community that I hear mm -hmm. coming so strongly through to you guys. Mm -hmm. What are some other programs that the Hui uh, is doing that we should make our viewers aware of? Well, we're, we're working on all the, um, the, the beginning infrastructure right now from stockpiling and things that is going to... Propose. Did you say cemetery? Oh, sorry. I said stockpiling. <laughs> you did oh, say yeah. stockpiling. I jumped the gun again. Yeah. <laughs> stockpiling in the back of Camino Illinois Valley. Yeah, and the Hui has been really on top of that. Mm. Um, attending all the meetings that have been called, well, maybe three meetings. But, you know, what's being said is not to me conducive for the residents there. Can th again, Alan, some of the viewers may not know that there has been a proposal for 10, 12 years mm -hmm. actively pushing for a cemetery in, in Hawaii Kai. And incidentally, before in, in my former s time in the state legislature, when I represented Aina Haina to Hawaii Kai, the cemetery was a key, key issue. And I remember what now is Howe Street and beyond there was going to be a cemetery. And now they're developing, and it's still kind of up in, yes. in arms, so to speak. But from Aina Haina, they moved it now to the back part of Camino Illinois Valley. Camino, yes. Do they have the permits? Do they have the wherewithal, the funding? Why, why if they got permission years ago, what, what's holding it up? Or is it these things that they just have not paid attention to? The things that we see and from subsequent, subsequent meetings mm -hmm. that we had and what DPP has shown us, and it's like with the contractors, to me, you know, I, I think somebody's in, several entities are in bed with each other. You know, people don't I know who it is. People don't know what DPP is. We need to oh, tell them that's yeah. Department of Planning. Yes, yes. Yeah. so then the city and so county. Right now, mm -hmm. there is a proposal to get the fill within the marina to be brought into the valley, mm -hmm. to be dried out, and to be used as um, uh, fill material for the cemetery. Now, 
they've said or a company has said that is going to be doing the work on that said oh you know um, it's a stable type of fill and there will be no smell when they first did that remyelin uh, mm. deposit that mm -hmm. they did the uh, uh, dredging for that that was Henry Kaiser's thing that they did that was or it? after that oh after that, that yeah mm -hmm. people know there's clams in there mm -hmm. there's oysters in there there's crabs in there now when these you know, they're organic stuff. If you take that out and you put them on, you tell me, I mean, we said, isn't there going to be a smell? The engineer said, no, there'll be no smell. I went, oh, okay. But I can't for the life of me see them dredging these mm -hmm. millions and millions of cubic yards of silt material that has been run off mm. and bringing it back into the valley, yeah, with all these organic materials in there. And tell me, it's not going to smell. Where they're going to deposit this to dry out is within 25 yards of a residence. And you know, it, these are the things that we're really concerned with. So this you're watching it as uh, things progress. Uh, have they oh made? Definitely, the, yes. Have mm -hmm. they progressed to do any of the construction, or is it just still some of the, the renovation? I'm, and I'm just reminded by our uh, uh, engineers that. We've actually just begun, but we've already reached our point of ending, and it's th time for closing comments already. Uh, Khalil, thank you for being here. And you got anything to pass on to the people of Hawaii Kai, Kalama Valley, well, and I others who may be viewing around the I would just like to stress to everyone out there, and thank you once again for giving us the opportunity, that within your own neighborhood, especially East Oahu, there are so many wonderful historic sites, cultural sites, that are available for the public. And the efforts for preservation is a continuing battle, and we ask that they support, and support all the efforts of the Hui, because they have integrity, and they have shown that their work is altruistic in nature and for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Alan, any closing comments? I mirror all that comments that she had said, you know, and thanks to you, Representative, that you know, you've been <coughs> you've been like, like a glue because we're unusual. You know, you look at all areas of Honolulu. East Honolulu is really unique. You know, we come together. You know, even with this issue with uh, the farms and you know, food land and whatever, we come together. You know, as a as a as a family, as a community. I mean, to me, it's one of the strongest community we have in the state. And you too are a reminder of why we have a great community because of the fire in the belly you've got for your community and the things you've done and the volunteers. On behalf of the community, thank you for what you're doing and keep at it. And for those of you who want to do a franchise of Little Hawaii Kai Hui, uh, they are available. <laughs> thank you for viewing. I'm Representative Gene Ward. Thank you and aloha. Thank you. <laughs>